Hello again. Welcome to Finland. Finland, one of the countries of all time. Cars, sausages, beer, 0.07% of people, 11% of all saunas, lakes, drug the tractor while heavily under the influence. What is this word? Molotov cocktail. Why is the snow speaking Finnish and the sport of rally car racing? Today is the day we immerse ourselves in this alien world of rally car racing. We're gonna build this good car. Tune it, upgrade it, skull 12 beers and drive it into oncoming traffic, take it to the local rally race, and with some luck, win. This journey was very hard, and made significantly more difficult, because if I die in the game, then that's it. I die in real life too. So, let us begin. We began on the start screen. I named myself Helsinki Farter, chose this beautiful photo for my mugshot, and began. The year is 1976. A boy is born. Me. Helsinki Farter. Fast forward 19 years, and it's 1995. Our boy is living in a nondescript lake house at the lake of Para... <laughs> Fuck! Upon waking up, we had a near unlimited number of possibilities. So, of course, we inhaled eight beers, watched the incredible Finnish film Topless Gun, and pissed all over the hot rocks in the sauna. In the garage was our project rally car, or at least all of its bits. This right here is the car's chassis, and inside the garage was everything else. Panels, doors, engine block, pistons, crankshaft, fuel tank, clutch, gearbox, struts, wishbones, brakes, shock absorbers, cylinder head, T3485 and main battle tank. Oh wait. That's not in the garage, that's in today's sponsor, World of Tanks. Gentlemen, it is time. The metamorphosis has already begun. I am the World of Tanks. The greatest tank free-to-play video game ever created with over 100 million players around, around the world. world. Can you guess what this game is about? Tanks. <laughs> over 600 million tanks. Destroyers, artillery, small, medium, and... Changus. I am going to assault the French. Oh wait, maybe the Germans. Actually, no. I'm going to assault the British. I will fight them on the beaches. I will fight them in the fields. And I will fight them across the 40 battle arenas spread all over the world. Do you know how many that is? I have no idea. I lost my frontal lobe in an industrial tank accident. You would not believe me how historically accurate they made this game. Believe me. I was there. Earn experience, modify, and upgrade your tank. Finnish comrade, join me in glorious battle against the Soviet menace and defend our beautiful homeland. Download World of Tanks for free with the link in the description. Use code TANKMANIA to get 7 days of premium for free. 250,000 credits, premium tank Excelsior, 3 rental tanks, Tiger 131, Cromwell, and T3485M. Do it now, or the Finns will be defeated. Also, they release some merch, so go check that out. Right, yeah. The uh, crankshaft, fuel tank, clutch, gearbox, struts, wishbones, brakes, shock absorbers, cylinder head, head gasket, rocker shaft, camshaft, you get the idea. Helping me build this car was nothing. I was going to try to build it without using any guides. Was this a good idea? No. Nope. All these parts fit together in a specific, sometimes very irritating way. Just, just go in, just go in, just go in. Fuck! Not to mention, each part has bolts, and the devs, thinking that screwing in hundreds of bolts would be far too easy, elected to make every single one have a size. Wait, you can't bolt this part in with the spanner? Sorry, fucko, that's the wrong spanner. Try again, sweaty. If I was gonna build this car, it was gonna take a long, long time. So, naturally, I got bored, went to bed, was woken in the middle of the night by the phone ringing, and I couldn't see shit. To make matters even worse was the most annoying character in the entire game. Bug. To get rid of Bug, I need to take a trip into town and get some mosquito spray, among some other very important items. Like beer. And sausages. I had two vehicles to choose from. This motorbike, which can only carry one thing at a time, or the tractor, which is really, really, really slow. 20 minutes later, I arrived in the bustling metropolis of P I bought my groceries and then drove the tractor for another 20 minutes back home. Building the car was going to take a long time. So while I struggle to figure out what the hell the distributor is and why I would need it for my car, why don't we talk about engines? An engine's job is simple. Convert the chemical energy of gasoline into kinetic energy in the car. First off, we start with suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. The four steps of a four-stroke engine. The engine sucks in a mixture of fuel and air, squeezes it really tight, ignites it with a spark plug, and blows out the exhaust. A little car has four cylinders, each sucking, squeezing, banging, and blowing. These four cylinders house four pistons, which each connect to the crankshaft. The pistons go up and down, and the crankshaft goes round and round. The crankshaft is connected to the wheels through the clutch and gearbox. Put your foot down on the gas, the engine spins faster, the wheels spin faster, and off you go. Simple, right? Yeah, well, obviously it's not that easy, as you can clearly see by my inability to assemble the clutch. 
My man, it's been 30 minutes. Why can't you figure it out? No, no, stop, stop, fuck, stop, stop, stop fucking the car with the tractor! Next up is suspension. Huh? Now, why do we need suspension? Well, without it, things get a bit bumpy. You need suspension not only to absorb bumps in the road, but also keep the wheels in contact with it. Brakes, probably the most simple part of the car. The brake discs are connected directly to the wheels. When you press on the brake pedal, brake pads push against the discs and convert their kinetic energy into heat. And there we go, I'd pretty much finished the car. You know, excluding the wiring, wheels, tires, brake fluid, clutch fluid, engine oil, coolant, camshaft alignment, and replacing about 15 parts that would inevitably break within 5 minutes of driving. You know, we were basically done. I retired back to the house to eat some food and drink a bit of water. But I couldn't. The sausages were spoiled. In fact, all the food in the fridge was spoiled. Oh no. I had spent so long working on the car that my house had been disconnected from the electricity for not paying in time. This could not have come at a worse time, because I had zero food. And tomorrow was Sunday. Timo's is not open on Sunday. Of course, I didn't know this, so I rode into town in a mild panic after my hunger meter had gone red. Timo, open up, open up, I need to eat your food, Timo, Timo, open up, Timo, open up! Shit. The sun had well and truly come up, which told me that Timo's was clearly not gonna open today, so I elected to ride my bike back home. On my way back, I came across the dance pavilion, which had two cars outside of it, blasting some funky beats. The game actually let me open the back doors of this car and climb inside, so seeing that I had nothing better to do, I gave it a go and hopped in. This was a terrible mistake. Immediately it was clear that the man driving had in fact consumed a rather large amount of alcohol prior and was driving at an alarmingly high speed with alarmingly low control. I then made an even worse decision and swore at the driver. This put him into a frenzied rage and he immediately stomped the gas, drove straight into a tree and died. Well shit. The only thing I could really do was hop out and walk home. So that's what I did. Ooh. Things, however, were not looking good. Being out in the sun and running home like this was rapidly increasing my thirst. I walked for what felt like hours along the dirt track leading home, and eventually, my house was just visible in the distance. I was so close to water. I reached the mailbox, looked inside to try pay the utilities, collapsed. Oh. No. And died. Attempt number two. This attempt did not last long. I named myself Drank until I blacked out, pissed on the TV, and died. Attempt three. I gave myself the brilliant name Glorable Florible. This time I was gonna use a guide and try to build the car a little faster. The first thing the guide wanted me to do was get in the tractor and go collect some stuff. One of those stuff were these wheels inside this abandoned mansion. The wheels were on the top floor, so of course, I went to the top floor, ignoring the wasp nest right above me. No! Attempt 4. I did all the same stuff as the late Glorbo Florbo, but yet again, died to the wasps like a complete idiot. Nope, 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 nope. Oh my god. Fuck! Attempt 5. This time, I saw the wasp nest and managed to sneak past it without getting stung. Using the guide and some of the knowledge I had accumulated over the past 12 hours, I was able to build up the car fairly quickly. And before I knew it, the engine was in, the suspension was suspended, the panels were attached, and wiring... wired. Did the car work? No. But it did in fact look like a car. All this work had been quite exhausting, so I loaded up this little boat with some supplies and took a nice relaxing trip to the island in the center of the lake. I was here for the fish trap, but also to just chill for a while and eat some sausages. That is, if I didn't burn every single one. Shit. Leaving the island, I made sure to ransack it for everything it had. This camera, lantern, coffee stuff, bucket, fish trap, and fireworks. Arriving back home, I needed to go buy yet more stuff from town, and I still only had the tractor to work with. Hopefully, this would be the last time I'd have to make this long, laborious trip. Nope.
back home, I put the final touches on the car. Wired the last things, filled up the fluids, pissed in the radiator for enhanced cooling, and what do you know, it was ready to be started. I put the key in the ignition, gave it a turn, and Well, that didn't sound good. This little crunch sound had completely drained the battery, so while it was charging, I went inside to watch some TV. Soon. Attempt 2 at starting the car. And against all odds, it actually worked. <gasps> oh my god, it started! Now granted, the car was making this horrific banging sound, but it ran. This banging was caused by the camshaft gear being out of alignment. To fix it, I'd have to take the engine out, remove the cover plate, and rotate it back into alignment. But why does the camshaft need to be aligned? Remember suck, squeeze, bang, and blow? This only works if these valves are correctly timed. These valves are needed to keep the air and fuel inside the cylinder during the squeeze and bang stages. The camshaft is responsible for opening and closing these valves at the correct time. One valve is for the intake, and the other is for the exhaust. If they aren't timed properly, you could be intaking air through the exhaust, and exhausting air through the intake. As you can imagine, not good for Mr. Car. Once the camshaft was aligned, and the engine thrown back in the car, it was time to start her up again. Shit. This time, something else was broken. Of course. Taking off the valve cover, I discovered that the rocker shaft, which is what actuates the valves, was broken. To fix this, I'd need to buy a new one at Flitari's repair shop. So I did. And threw it in the car. Oh. oh! It runs! Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh! Gentlemen, we had done it. Everything seemed to be working. I could even put it in gear and move. This was extremely satisfying. After working on this thing for hours and hours, it finally ran. Naturally, I gave it a quick test drive around the dirt outside the house when I drove it into a ditch and it broke. Fuck! It was time to take our little car on its maiden voyage. I got it onto the highway and jammed the throttle all the way down. The acceleration was bad. The car topped out at just over 100 kilometers an hour, giving it a zero to 100 time of about 60 seconds. Miraculously, I had managed to reach town without the car breaking down. So I turned her around and headed back home. This is where things went wrong. Perhaps running the car at full throttle, constantly, wasn't such a good idea. As I crossed the bridge near the repair shop, I heard this. That did not sound good, and the car was slowly losing power. I managed to limp a few more hundred meters before it ultimately died on the turn off to the repair shop. Taking the engine apart, I found this. A blown head gasket, and one of the pistons just... missing. Hmm. Luckily, I was near the repair shop, so I could easily go buy some new parts. Unluckily, it was Saturday, and the shop wouldn't be open until Monday. I could just wait, but that would take hours, so I decided to hop on the bus and take it back home. This was a terrible mistake. I left my computer running to go take a piss, only to come back to the bus, humping another car. Reviewing the footage, I was horrified to see this complete Dorbus crash into the bus while on the wrong side of the road. Now this, by itself, was pretty unlucky. But what made it even worse was that this idiot had a trailer attached to his car, which had managed to get the bus perfectly stuck in the middle of the road. This is awesome. Since I was technically still moving, even if only a few centimeters per second, I couldn't get off the bus, and I couldn't leave. The only option here was to quit to menu, and revert the last three hours of progress. Awesome. Fuck! This put us back to when the rocker shaft was broken, so once again I hopped on the bike to go get a new one. It being Wednesday, I knew that the only other person on the road leading into the repair shop was the guy in the green car. But for some reason, the road to my house was taped off, which would indicate the rally was taking place. Further up the road, my suspicions were confirmed when a rally car travelling at approximately 2% the speed of light oh shot past, God, barely on. missing me. Whoa. I don't know why the rally was on, it only happens on the weekend, and it was clearly Wednesday, but... whatever. Now, if I had any sense, I would have gotten off the road, seeing as it was clearly pretty hazardous. But I was tired and frustrated at what had happened on the bus. So I hopped back on the road on my bike, and five minutes later, got completely... obliterated.
In shock, I stared at the death screen for a good two minutes before resigning to my fate. <coughs> Disabling permadeath, naming myself, I give up, and trying again.